Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Ever look at the breakdown on your electricity bill with all of the transmission and distribution costs and wonder if there was a better way? This week, we look at how distributed generation could revolutionize the electricity grid. Whether you call it dispersed, distributed, on-site, decentralized, or embedded energy, the idea is roughly the same. Generate the electricity where you need it, not hundreds of kilometers away where you need expensive power lines. Jason Zorowski of Ecall Electric in Calgary built one of thousands of examples of decentralized energy projects across Canada. I'm Jason with Ecall Electric. Uh, this is a, we actually installed a 47.2 kilowatt solar system on our facility here. We have a total of 189 250 watt panels on our roof here. And this is the actual monitoring system for uh, our roofing system here. We interviewed Anouk Kendall, the Executive Director of the World Alliance for Decentralized Energy Canada, on the roof of Ecall Electric, flanked by 189 solar modules. Decentralized energy, distributed energy, however you look at it, our whole industry is, it's ancient. It's very old. There's no other industry, like cars, telephones, computers, there's no other industry that's stagnated for as long as the energy industry. We're still looking at 80-year-old or 50-year-old power plants, coal-fired facilities, that are connected to 80-year-old transmission lines that are located 200 kilometers plus away from the user. Many of the systems that power our homes are big centralized coal, hydro or nuclear plants. Today we can use nimble and cheap natural gas or solar facilities that can be located where the power is needed. Not only are these decentralized energy systems cheaper to build, but it also means we spend less money replacing aging transmission lines. If there's any time for us to start looking at a more modern progressive energy infrastructure, it's right now. We have to spend the money, so are we going to spend it on the 1940 or 1950 uh, Chevrolet or are we going to buy something more modern and, 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 and make a commitment to modernizing this industry? We're going to have to spend the money, so better do it smart and, and wiser. Canada's far-reaching natural gas network is just the thing to support widespread use of on-location combined heat and power plants. In our series, we've seen these efficiencies even in biogas operations where farmers create enough heat and power from cow manure to power and heat their entire farm. Combined heat and power facilities, also called cogeneration in the industrial applications, means that you're producing electrical and thermal energy. You're heating your home or you're heating a building at the same time as providing electricity for it. And you're building that system for the heating requirements because your electricity is usually a smaller, much smaller percentage of your energy consumption. In addition to solar and combined heat and power, Biomass and small wind also work as decentralized energy sources. This is all made possible by modern grids that can accept and trade power from smaller sources and... Really with the lower cost of the distributed technology, these combined heat and power systems making the engines more efficient uh, and, and lower cost and then the dramatic fall in cost of solar power is really what's pushing the distributed generation agenda around the world. That's Brent Harris, the Chief Technology Officer of Sustainable Energy Technologies. Speaking about distributed energy, his Calgary company is selling inverters to Germany. There are benefits beyond cost when it comes to distributed generation. It makes the grid more resilient and less prone to catastrophic failures. Distributed energy helps the grid by making it less vulnerable to single points of failure. You've got generation spread all over the grid. That's the main reason that Japan is aggressively pursuing a distributed generation policy uh, to deal with uh, disasters and not take down half the country's grid if, uh, if something happens in one location. Saving money on the grid is a good thing, but so too is investing in cleaner natural gas and even cleaner solar energy. But just how far can we go when it comes to greening the grid? We can go, uh, we can go all the way. I mean, what you're going to see, I think, in India is uh, a lot of distributed generation because the grid is so weak there and, and they're just not going to pay to upgrade it. Uh, you know, easily you can get to 25% of your total ener energy generation in a, a province like this uh, from distributed generation. A uh, place like Germany is probably headed more toward 50%. To learn more about distributed energy, head to our website at greenenergyfutures.ca. We've also got photos, a blog, and a podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Drop us a comment on our Facebook page or send us a tweet or email. Thank you for watching. For Green Energy Futures, 
I'm David Dodge.